This is Thriving Thoughts, the podcast that teaches you how to change your thoughts so you can change your life. I'm Dr. Sherry, clinical psychologist turned thoughtologist and truth teller. Welcome to season seven, where you'll learn to be gentle and deliberate with your words so that together we learn what it really means for women to encourage, uplift, and empower one another. Twice per week in five-minute episodes, we'll dissect popular phrases women say to one another, expose the lies hiding beneath their surface that perpetuate problematic ideals, and learn how to speak true encouragement so we uplift ourselves and others. Are you ready to speak truth over the lies and be an empowered woman who empowers other women? Start with this truth. A woman who changes her world changes the world. Let's go. Have you ever tried to quit something? Quit eating sweets, quit swearing, speaking negatively to yourself, smoking, being a doormat, making excuses, or procrastinating? It's ironic. You're listening to episode 180. When someone stops doing one thing and goes in the opposite direction, we say they've done a 180. You've heard someone say of a person, they did a 360. Well, that would mean that the person left where they were and what they were doing and wound up back in the same place where they started. That would describe the experience of many who try to quit something. It's hard, right? We have the best intent, but we keep coming back to that thing we say we want to quit. Why? My mother once told me this profound truth. Whatever you focus on stays with you. Ah, yes, grasshopper mother. How true I discovered this statement to be in my personal life and now as the foundational thread in my work as a thoughtologist. Whatever we focus on stays with us. Said differently, whatever we think about is what we think about, even if we're thinking about not thinking about the thing we're thinking about. You'll experience this when I tell you about a pink elephant named Delilah. And then I ask you to stop thinking about said pink elephant named Delilah. You see her, don't you? You're picturing her cute tutu and wondering why her mom named her Delilah. She seems fun and you wonder what her favorite snacks are, what her friends are like. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Why am I having a conversation with myself about a pink elephant? It's a psychological phenomenon, investigated and named ironic process theory by social psychologist and thought suppression pioneer Daniel Wegner, which says when you tell your brain not to think about something, part of it doesn't, but then another part checks to ensure that you're not thinking about it, which ironically brings it to mind. This is what happens when we try to quit something, or in the popular personal development lingo, let it go. We want to let it go, but we keep thinking about it despite telling ourselves not to. Quitting means to stop doing something, to let go of something you've been holding on to. The reason most of us fail at quitting is twofold. One, our minds are focused on the thing we want to quit, and two, We haven't given ourselves an alternative. If we want to stop eating junk food, we'll set ourselves up for failure by making a list of all the stuff we want to stop eating. We may even go as far as to empty our cupboards of prepackaged and processed temptation. The thing we say we don't want is gone, yes, and we can't stop thinking about tasting it again. So the next time we pop into 7-Eleven, we snag that crunchy bag of Cheetos or harmless jumbo-sized peanut butter cup. Ah, there's our fix. We can't stop thinking about it because when we stare into our cupboards, where once was a tasty treat, there is now nothing. We didn't swap this for that. Eat this, not that. Think this, not that. Do this, not that. Say this, not that. The idea behind these mandates is that in order to stop doing one thing, you must replace it with another. Simple enough when it comes to food, right? Choose healthier snacks to have available in one Snickers bar tucked in the corner rather than a Costco-sized bin. But what about hurt, sadness, pain or betrayal? How do you quit that? And why do we tell each other we should just let it go? We don't and because it doesn't make us feel good. And Western culture tells us not to think about stuff that doesn't make us feel good. But what if it's a matter of thinking differently about what we're thinking about rather than thinking differently altogether? Brianna Weist, author of 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think, said, healing is letting yourself feel. So in our desperation to not feel pain, we need to replace it with learning how to feel the pain. When we let go of our fear of pain, we are able to embrace its utility in helping us heal. You'll never be successful in letting go because you were meant to latch on, to latch on to a new way of eating, communicating, of being, to latch on to a new way of thinking about hurt. It's not letting go. 
of a fixed mindset. It's latching on to a mindset of growth, one of thriving. Together, we can continue to speak truth over lies and thrive.